Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm talking to Kit Bell, who is VP Data Analytics at VMware. Kit, welcome. Thank you. Let's start with this. Uh, you have just arrived at VMware from a company called Uhana, which is an artificial intelligence company. Um, new acquisition back in the summer, a couple of months ago. Why and what's the result? So uh, it's really about bringing artificial intelligence and machine learning to the mobile network and ultimately to delivering better user experiences and better economics for service providers. And so ultimately, we're really in a place now where we can bring a tremendous benefit to these customers. And VMware saw this, and being that they really have been super aggressive in terms of not only building the telco portfolio, but making a move on 4G and 5G, it was a natural fit. Okay, let's stay with Uhana just for a moment, Kit, if we could. Where were you before you became part of VMware? What were you concentrating on? What do you bring to the party as far as VMware is concerned? What are the synergies? So if I go back, uh, I joined Johanna in the summer of 2017, and I'd spent a long time at, at Cisco and other large telecom equipment providers. And what really attracted me to the company was the fact that we had the combination of uh, the data science capability and really this deep understanding of mobile networks, of data networks, combined with the deep cloud expertise. So there were a number of, of uh, capabilities that we'd built around building truly high scale systems. And then add to that this true uh, focus on mobility and 4G and ultimately 5G. Uh, that to me was incredibly attractive and I think ultimately is what led VMware to the same conclusion that I came to two years ago, this is a great opportunity and the timing is right. That being said, what Johanna really had built and what we've been building over the last few years was this very high scale, high performance AI and machine learning platform designed to really again help service providers build now new capabilities, not only in terms of how they operate their network, but going forward, new service and application capabilities that lead us down the path ultimately to 5G and network slicing. Okay, one thing I noticed you haven't yet mentioned is the cloud. I take it that the cloud features very largely in all of this. Absolutely. Well, as I mentioned, the Johanna technology was built as cloud native, high scale, very high performance. But really, if we, if we look at the bigger market, as we go towards 5G, and, and this has actually been true with 4G as well, but really will happen with 5G, the cloud becomes the platform, and the network is actually built on top of the cloud. So I know that sounds a little, little bit different than we've, we've talked about before, but if we look at how 5G is architected, 5G actually will run as an application on the cloud. And so obviously with VMware's leadership over the last you know, 15, 20 years, in the business, actually having invented virtualization. Again, being able to bring this level of intelligence towards the mobile network, it was an unbeatable combination. Right, you've been together and consolidated for a few months now, not that long. You've had a chance to see where the synergies are. What is happening? How is VMware using your expertise and what Nuhana brought in the first place mm -hmm. now and where's it going? Well, first of all, we have a number of customer projects that we're doing that we haven't yet announced, but in Asia, in the Americas, and in Europe. So we're already working together now with VMware to accelerate those projects and bring those to fruition uh, in a faster timeline. But beyond that, it's really about being able to now mix these capabilities together to actually take the AI and machine learning, the automation, and actually integrate it with some of the other exciting things that VMware is doing not just for telcos, but more broadly, as we look about extending the network from the, the traditional service provider domain into the enterprise, true multi-cloud. This is where the Yuhana capabilities in terms of being able to predict network performance, workload placement, all these types of things, it all comes together. So more announcements to come in this space, uh, both in terms of customers and products. Uh, but I can just say this is a very foundational technology and certainly We've customers really are very excited about using AI and machine learning to help automate those networks. 
Kit, let's talk about 5G in a bit more detail in a minute. But first, let's talk about the operators as they are now. Mm -hmm. We know 5G is on the way or very close to being on the way. Um, what exactly are they? What do the CSPs, the DSPs, the nascent OSPs get from this? So ultimately, what we're doing is we are building a very fine grain, high resolution picture of the network down to the individual user level. Now, we don't see exactly what users are doing with their, their connections. We don't even know who they are. They're all anonymized. That's built into the system. So we're very sensitive on data privacy and user privacy. But what we're able to do is to look at the behavior of individual sessions and actually analyze those in real time and find ways to optimize those. So this works today on 4G. And again, it provides a foundation for 5G. But what we're able to do is, on this per session basis, be able to tell the network how to optimize those connections, whether it's to use a different frequency, perhaps use a different modulation technique, or even in some cases, you know, we can signal to the applications where we can increase or decrease uh, buffer sizes, again, to get that performance and to deliver the best user experience possible. And I think in this world where uh, so many service providers are really focused on net promoter score, or NPS, as really their, their primary metric, it's not about a group of users, how they think about it. It's about each and every session, how you and I are experiencing the network, and really making sure it's optimized on that very personalized level. That's how you get those net promoter scores going. That's how you get a customer for life. And ultimately, that's how you sell them more things. Traditionally, operators have sampled, as it were, the network or the state of the network every 20 minutes, every half hour or so. I take it you're doing it rather more rapidly than that. That's a, it's a very good insight. So we're actually doing it much more like on a per second basis. Uh, we can even go uh, shorter than that if we want to. But we really can see the, the network instantaneously and in real time. And so ultimately, you know, these 15 to 20 to 30 minute intervals that have been traditionally how operators have managed their network, it just doesn't work. You know, we're sitting here in central London right now. Uh, we came in through a bit of a traffic jam. And you can see, you know, users are picking up their phones, looking at you know, their applications, making a call. So the network is not a smooth rolling countryside. It's more like jagged mountain peaks. And so it's important for the operators to really understand how the network is performing in real time. Because again, morning, noon, and night, it's different. But even today, it's a bit rainy, more people taking taxis or the underground. It's going to change every day. And to truly have a real-time system to optimize that network and then be able to make that ultimately programmable, that's going to be the key to success going forward, not only with 4G, but with 5G. Good mention of 5G there, because that's my <laughs> next question. Um, what about 5G then, Kit? What, what, how important is this going to be, do you think, in terms of what VMware can bring to the party that others cannot do? So it's, uh, it's a very interesting question because we are looking at a number of places where, as I mentioned before, with the cloud as the foundation, truly understanding how not only the radio network is performing, but also how the cloud itself is performing. What are the kinds of workloads? What are the demands in real time? And then being able to make those adjustments necessary. There's a lot of discussion about things like mobile edge cloud. and How do we do things like uh, AR and VR and gaming, these sorts of real time, high value workloads that we can't really run on our phones, but we don't want to push them back to a hyperscale data center in the core. So actually, long term, the efficiency of your cloud is actually going to dictate how efficient your overall network is running, even out to, as you think about it, the spectral efficiency of 5G, which is really how many bits can we deliver over a megahertz of spectrum, actually will be dictated by the performance of the cloud. So where Johanna can really bring a tremendous advantage is to have this real-time closed-loop architecture. We can understand how all these things are it's going to be performing and interacting with one another we can actually help optimize those in real time. And like I said, we're delivering better user experience, better efficiency, and ultimately better economics. Last question to you. A lot of the emphasis on initial 5G applications and services are in the consumer mm. private subscriber area with talk about enterprise and big business in due course. What, how long do you think it will be and what will you bring that will differentiate you in the consumer sector 
and in the enterprise sector? So if I look at it, 4G was really about bringing consumer mobile broadband, right? If we think back 10 or 12 years ago, uh, very few people had a smartphone. It was, uh, it was a rarity, right? Now, everyone has a smartphone. In fact, I asked a room of people the other day, I said, who here doesn't own a smartphone? Of course, not a single hand was raised. Then I asked how many people have multiple smartphones. Of course, <laughs> multiple hands go up. But I think in consumer broadband, in 4G, what we're really able to do is deliver an optimized user experience for these latency sensitive applications like video, uh, like gaming, these sorts of things where people really want to have a high performance application but can sometimes be limited by the radio connection. We can optimize for that. I think as we go forward in 5G, it's really gonna be about IoT, industrial internet, and really being able to, uh, if you will, automate and connect all these unconnected things. As we do that, really being able to guarantee uh, connectivity sessions deterministically, and being able to guarantee different kinds of bandwidth connectivity this is what's going to enable the next class of applications that we haven't even considered yet. And so ultimately, again, if we, if we think about going from just a, a broadband best effort service to truly a very finely tuned, low latency, high performance service where we can enable again, the exciting new things that are going to change our lives yet again, uh, that's the exciting opportunity. And that's really where VMware, I think, is uniquely positioned because we're not only going to do this on behalf of the service providers, working with them in the market, but we're going to connect this into the enterprise, really driving against VMware's heritage in helping enterprises virtualize their IT workloads, connect those workloads together, and ultimately extend that to a multi-cloud environment. We're going to take the 5G network all the way in the enterprise, connect those together, and create that next wave of innovation. And we're really excited about it. Very interesting. Kit Bell, thank you. Thank you.